welcome back so this brings us to the one of the most awaited special session for the fourth geneva forum the special session titled tibet stolen child leven pension lama gendun chigingima for this special session we are honored once again honorable sikyong pempa chiringla the Central Tibetan Administration, and Venerable Tenzin Thubten Rabkela about Tashilhumbu Monastery, South India, and Secretary Kamachuingla, Department of Information and International Relations. And uh, the name of the panel is not reflected on the agenda. We apologize for that because of some technical uh, issues. So we had to replace the panel that is reflected on the agenda. So in his place, we are deeply honored to have Kai Muller, Executive Director, ICT Germany, for filling his place at a very short notice. Thank you so much, Kai. So please, may I, and Dukdenki will moderate the panel. So may I kindly invite all the panelists and the moderator to kindly start the session. Thank you. Good evening once again, Tashi Deleg. Um, we are delighted to have this special panel um, titled Tibet Stolen Child, the 11th Panchen Lama Gendin Chuki Nima of Tibet. For this panel, we have very distinguished speakers, Afghan Linda has already mentioned. Um, so without further ado, um, I would request uh, Secretary of Department of Information and International Relations uh, Mr. Kama Chuing, to give a brief overview about this panel. Uh, Honorable Sijong, Mr. Pembutsiring, Most Venerable Sijia Rinpoche, uh, Mr. Kai Muller, Director, Executive Director, ICT Germany, uh, the members on the floor, I would like to first welcome and touch it like to all the attendants. So, uh, the, I would like to begin with a short uh, opening note uh, to about this uh, event. Gendun Chujinima was recognized on 14th May 1995 by His Holiness the Dalai Lama is the true reincarnation of Panchen Lama in Dharamsala, India. Three days later, on 17 May, China abducted Gendun Chujin Yima and his family members. Even to this day, the Chinese government continues to subject them to incommunicado detention and forced disappearance, thereby disregarding not only its obligation to the international human rights norms and standards, but also its own laws and regulations. China's abduction of then six-year-old Panchen Lama in 1995, three years after it, it had ratified the Convention of the Rights of the Child, is a blatant violation of its obligation as a signatory. Since then, the United Nations Human Rights Council and various treaty bodies, including the Working Group on Enforced or Involuntary Disappearance, Committee on Rights of the Child, the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion and Belief, and the High Commissioner for Human Rights and Committee Against Torture have frequently called on China to disclose any information on Panchen Lama. Despite repeated calls by the United Nations Special Rapporteurs and Treaty Bodies, China has continuously refused to divulge any sufficient or satisfactory response to the queries on the well-being and whereabouts of Panchen Gindun Chuji, Panchen Gindun Chuji Nima, as well as his family. The case of Pension Lama is still open and remains one of the unresolved cases at the United Nations. 
On 25th April 2020, observing Pension Lama's 31st birth anniversary, the Central Tibetan Administration launched a month-long global advocacy campaign to amplify the call for the release of Gendun Chujin Nima and his entire, fam entire family. Through the, though the campaign was carried out virtually because of the COVID-19 pandemic, CTA was able to draw overwhelming support and endorsement from the international community towards the appeal for justice against the enforced disappearance of Pension Lama, exceeding the ex expectation during the pandemic. The CTA, through its offices of Tibet, met with and submitted Pension Lama advocacy documents to government officials, parliamentarians, and various international rights organizations. With this initiative, the CTA reached out to over 40 countries and 192 member states of the United Nations and requested them to press China further on the case of enforced disappearance of Pension Lama. As a result, more than 140 government officials, parliamentarians from across 18 countries and eight international organizations and civil societies, including Human Rights Watch, UN Watch, Forum 2000, and many others have issued statements urging their governments to call on China to release the Panjian Lama and his family members. Furthermore, over 159 organizations from 18 countries across five regional groups under the United Nations submitted a joint petition to the United Nations, urging it to pressure China for the immediate release of Pension Lama and his entire family. Thus, this outstanding support in issuing of statements prompt, prompted the publication of a book on Pension Lama to carry on the advocacy work that will further the pursuit of increased global support. The book is titled The Tibet's, Tibet's Stolen Child, Remembering the Story of the 11th Pension Lama Gindun Chojinima, and serves as a reminder for China of growing global support to hold its government responsible for the enforced disappearance of Panjian Lama 26 years ago. Book contains chapter on legacy of the 10th Panjian Lama, Tundup Chui Jensei, and how he endured inhuman ordeals at the hands of Chinese government for standing up for the protection of Tibetan language, culture, and identity before he passed away under mysterious circumstances in January 1989. The book also has a chapter on the enforced disappearance of current 11th Panchen Lama, highlighting the actual events from the reincarnation process endorsed by His Holiness the Dalai Lama to the illegitimate abduction by the Chinese government at the age of six, along with his entire family members and Chaudhary Rinpoche, the head of the search committee. It also contains a chapter underscoring the United Nations efforts in calling for the release of Panchen Lama in chronological order and the statements of the government officials and members of parliament during the month-long advocacy, month, month advocacy campaign. This book is published in five different languages, English, Tibetan, Japanese, Chinese, and Hindi to reach wider audience. Due to the pandemic, the advocacy campaign could not take off as planned. However, with the situation improving across the world, we are hopeful that we can visit some other countries for the campaign as planned. Considering the urgency of the worsening overall human rights situation inside Tibet and the overwhelming support that we received during the month-long advocacy campaign in 2020, we have decided to embark on an advocacy campaign in a select countries to further raise the issue of the 11th Panchen Lama, his family, and the head of the search committee, Chadri Rinpoche, and to tell the world that their whereabouts and well-beings are still unknown for so many years. We urge the United Nations Council, Human Rights Council, and international community to continue to raise the issue of 11 Panchen Lama with Chinese government at various bilateral and multilateral forum with renewed sense of urgency. Last but not the least, I would like to express my gratitude to the NED for supporting this advocacy campaign and Ms. Pema Tulutang of the NED, who is here with us today to witness the event for her support and guidance. I must also thank Sigir Rinpoche, the abbot of Tashilumbu Monastery in South India, for being part of this advocacy campaign. And I'm also grateful to Sijong Pemba Srinla for his presence, and we shall continue to seek your guidance and blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kumukamala, for providing a brief um, 
a glimpse of CTA's efforts in, in um, advocating for Pension Lama's release. Um, may I now request Kai Muller, um, who will be speaking, uh, uh, giving a polit um, legal perspective on the enforced disappearance case of uh, Pension um, Pension Gendin Chokinima. Kai, please. Thank you very much for, for having me here um, this afternoon. And uh, indeed, I think it's, for me as the only non-Tibetan on this panel, it's only remotely possible to grasp, I think, the enormity and meaning of this crime. Um, nevertheless, I would like to offer some thoughts uh, in a legal, if not legalistic, uh, perspective. Uh, Tibet's Panchen uh, Lama Gedunchuki Nima disappeared in May 1995, and he has not been seen since. That is 26 years ago, a enormously long time. The 1992 Declaration on the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance in Article 17 stipulates, I quote, Acts constituting enforced disappearance shall be considered a continuing offense as long as the perpetrators continue to conceal the fate and the whereabouts of persons who have disappeared and these facts remain unclarified." Quote end. The crime of enforced disappearance as defined in the Declaration on the Protection of all persons from enforced disappearance, which I just quoted, and which is also mirrored by the 2006 Convention Against Disappearance, is therefore a continuous crime until the fate or whereabouts of the disappeared person becomes known. Accordingly, the enforced disappearance since 1995 of Gedun Shirki Nima is a continuous crime with the victim and with perpetrators. Gedun Chirki Nima and his family on the one hand, and as perpetrators, those who ordered and carried out the disappearance at the time, and the ones who are responsible over time and today for concealing the fate of Tenzin Chirki Nima. Those are the relevant representatives of the Chinese authorities at the time, over time, and today. This fact should be very clear to the international community. Again, I'd like to quote from the preamble of the declaration. I quote, considering that enforced disappearance undermines the deepest values of any society committed to respect for the rule of law, human rights, and fundamental freedoms, and that the systematic practice of such acts is of the nature of a crime against humanity. Article one. A further quote in article one. It constitutes, the, the enforced disappearance constitutes a violation of the rules of international law guaranteeing the right to recognition as a person before the law, the right to liberty and security of the person, and the right not to be subjected to torture and other cruel, inhuman, or grave, or degrading treatment or punishment. It also violates or constitutes a grave threat to the right to life. This underlines the enormity and the meaning of this crime of this abduction of the pension lama. And that is why, over the time, numerous United Nations independent instruments and governments have raised this crime, this violation of international law, with the perpetrator, the Chinese government, that is, with those responsible for the continuous offense this dis disappearance constitutes. Among them were and are the Committee of the Rights of the Child, the Working Group on Enforced or Involuntary Disappearance, the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief, and the Committee Against Torture. Furthermore, in the past, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, respectively Mary Robinson, Robinson and Louise Arbour, who have raised this case. I would like to note most recently that most recently, in a June 2020 communication to the Chinese government, the following human rights experts have raised the case of the pension lama with the Chinese government. The Working Group on Enforced or Involuntary Disappearance, the Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, the Special Rapporteur 
in the field of cultural rights, the Special Rapporteur on Minority Issues, and the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief. They stated the following, I quote, the disappearance of Mr. Gedon Chirki Nima has been raised with Your Excellency's government multiple times by special procedures mandate holders. The UN Committee on the Rights of the Child has also requested China to allow an independent expert to visit Mr. Gedon Chirki Nima to confirm his whereabouts and verify the fulfillment of his rights. We note that Your Excellency's government, the Chinese government, has expressed on several occasions its support for the international community's efforts to eliminate and prevent enforced disappearances, including at the Human Rights Council, which China did. We thus reiterate our demand for Your Excellency's government to provide prompt and detailed information on Gedun Chirki Nima's whereabouts, and we endorse the CRC's, the Child Rights Committee's recommendation to allow an independent monitor to visit him to confirm his whereabouts and the extent to which he is able to enjoy and exercise his rights. We also appeal to Your Excellency's government to ensure that Tibetan Buddhists are able to freely practice their religion, traditions, and culture without interference." Quote end. Notably, the communication also cites for the first time, as far to my knowledge, with regard to the Dalai Lama, when it says, furthermore, quote, there is fear that the Chinese authority will identify and appoint the successor of the current Dalai Lama against the Tibetan traditions and the wish of Tibetan Buddhist communities. This is remarkable because it alludes for the first time on an international level to the issue of the next reincarnation or the successor of the present Dalai Lama. The recommendations contained in this communication as previous similar recommendations by independent human rights experts should continue to be brought up in communications to the Chinese government by UN expert bodies and governments alike. Aware of the unique independent mandate, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights should be urged to continue interventions initiated by then High Commissioner Robinson and our board to determine the whereabouts, the well-being, and the fate of the Panchen Lama. Michel Bachelet, the current High Commissioner, when traveling to the PRC, if this so happens, should raise the Panchen Lama with the Chinese government. And the High Commissioner should not only raise the case and reiterate the many recommendations made, she should make clear that this disappearance is particularly unacceptable since it involves a six-year-old child and his family. Needless to say, the Chinese government should sign and ratify international legal instruments and finally release the Panchen Lama and the many others that have been disappeared, Tibetans, Uyghurs, Chinese. It is well known to this audience, I believe, what, as an example, the Chinese government stated in 2013 at the Child Rights Committee. They said, Gedun Chirki Nima lived like any other ordinary Chinese citizen. He had received compulsory and higher education in China and was leading a healthy, normal life. He and his family had expressed the wish not to be disturbed by outsiders as they feared they might seek to use him for political motives. Quote end. If that were the case, why cannot then an independent observer ascertain his health and hear from Gedon Chirki Nima himself? At this stage, the case of the Panchen Lama remains an outstanding one to, to be resolved for the United Nations human rights mechanisms who have made numerous interventions to stop China's continuous crime of enforced disappearance. In this search for the Panchen Lama by the UN Human Rights Mechanism, the central question has not been answered. Where is he? We can nevertheless conclude that China had been compelled to provide information on his, on his status from which assumptions can be made. Yet, without the world actually seeing the Panchen Lama alive, China's claims can only be considered contradictory, sus suspicious, and incomplete. Apart from urging the Chinese government to disclose the whereabouts of Gedun Shirki Nima and to allow independent monitors to visit him, one thing should not be forgotten. Both the Declaration and the Convention Against Disappearance stipulate that disappearance be a punishable offense and those responsible for it to be brought to justice. This ultimately means that those responsible are held to be held accountable, accountable 
ultimately. All of this is not just an individual rights violation, and I want to allude to what Michael van Walt has presented today. It is also a violation of collective rights, as the cultural right of the Tibetan people, um, <clears throat> as religion is an integral part of the Tibetan culture, and as the right to as a right to appoint religious clergy is a recognized principle of freedom of religion or belief. That is to self-determine one's religious institutions and ultimately one's culture. Thank you for your attention. And I would like to note that this short presentation has been informed by the late Nawang Chirpil's work and his 2019 article, The United Nations Continuing Search for Tibet's Panchen Lama. I recommend reading. Thank you. Well, that was a very detailed explanation on the enormity of the crimes committed against Benjamin uh, Gendunche Ginyima and his family and to the Tibetan people and Buddhists uh, around the world to a greater extent, committed by the Chinese government um, as per uh, the various UN conventions that um, Kai has mentioned. So thank you very much, Kai. Um, next, may I request Honorable, uh, uh, sorry, may I request uh, Venerable Zikyap Rinpoche, um, uh, Tashilumbo Ken Rinpoche, or the ab abode of Tashilumbo Monastery based in South India, Dharamshala, uh, sorry, South India, um, Karnataka. So uh, Rinpoche has traveled all the way from South India to be with us here. Um, so um, Rinpoche will be reading um, or speaking in Tibetan, and I will be reading the English translation. Thank you. Chino Gonsa Kimgui Jumbo Chola Ya Kucha Ngun Do Tan Tho Ne Ni Tari Jine Wa Ling De Di Nang Ya Chigui Ta Cho Ten Di Nang Le Chigui Nang Wei Ke Yu Pi Mi Jin Zugi Si Gyeong Pen De Si Gyeong Kong Wa Pen Ba Sirin Cho Dang and the Hanashi Kushab Kai Muller, and you be meeting Zuki Chiri Junji Kong Kamachuila, and the Hanashi Sogyong and Juliana Zebe, and the Pig is Zadungi Chetel Hasam Samegi, and the Gabjor Nangi Kunjo Yongia, Samji Dang, and the Quincy Ten Quincy Penjan and Bujin Nedundi, Perda Himalaya, some to Masebe, some Nichilia, Kanichi Mujitari Mitolia, Shugu Kokab Nawa de la Shijini, the Satashilimbu Combatang, the Hanashi Jay, some make it subsidy. Um, so, um, paying homage to His Holiness the Dalai Lama and um, thanking um, Honorable Si Kyung and um, co-panelists here, um, Rinpoche will start his uh, speech today. Kunsi Benjin Rinpoche Choni, Pigyu Nang Den Chulu Gi Lugyu Nang. Sangi Bamig, Namdu, Yiche, Shushin, Tebe, Longo Gaja, Kashena, Quincy, Benchin, Quintin, Rimji, Namgi, Dredden, Nangor Church of the Devil, Labjing, Zavagan Nawe, Perda Himalaya, Rigugi, Mimanam Dang, Dishin, Sobo, the Yung, Gariso, Ishi, Lingchen Dang, Zamlin, Kun Yone, Deden Saya Mangbe, Sem Dingne, Degulana Meba, Shushin Yu. His Holiness the Pension Lama, according to Tibetan Buddhism, is the embodiment of Amitabha. Through the lineage of the Penchen Lamas down the ages, starting from the first Penchen Lama to the tenth Penchen Lama, have been spiritual teachers of singular quality to millions of sentient beings in Tibet, Himalayan regions of India, Mongolia, Japan, China in Asia, and certain parts of the world. The devotion of the disciples to the Penchen Lama as the spiritual guru continues to this day. <laughs> Pesigazer, Consichota, 
1447, the first Dalai Lama Gendindrup established the Tashilumbu Monastery in Shigaze in a province west of Tibet following a spiritual tradition called Geluk lineage. Given his learning and practice of Buddhism, he received the title of Penchen, which means great scholar. In the 17th century, the fourth Penchen Lama, Lopsang Chugi Gense, became a great scholar at Tashilumbu Monastery. He became the spiritual teacher to the fourth Dalai Lama and the fifth Dalai Lama. When he passed away, the great fifth Dalai Lama announced that his teacher would reappear as the reincarnation of the previous Penchen Lama of Tashilumbu Monastery. Since that time, it has been a convention in Tibet for the Dalai Lama and Penchen Lama to be involved in the recognition of each other's successor. This unique tradition of recognizing each other's reincarnation and being a mentor to each other's learning and practice is celebrated throughout Tibet. The public encapsulated this unique relation in a popular devotional song, quote, in the sky, the sun and the moon, on earth, the Dalai Lama and Penchen Lama. Kun the 10th Penchen Lama was born in 1938 in Amdo region of Tibet. From a very young age, he was recognized by the 14th Dalai Lama as the reincarnation of the 9th Penchen Lama in 1951. As per tradition, he took to learning and practice of Buddhism from a young age to be of service to all sentient beings. And when the time came for him to serve the Tibetan people, the great 10th Penchen Lama's significant contribution to the cause of the political and spiritual struggle, especially at a time of critical danger of being wiped out by the Chinese regime, cannot be ignored. In 1959, when the Chinese regime invaded and occupied Tibet, and when the great 14th Dalai Lama had to flee Tibet into exile to continue the struggle against the Chinese regime from outside Tibet, the Penchen Lama, pushing aside his own personal safety issues and for the sake of the Tibetan people's identity, spiritual practice, and survival of the unique way of life, struggled fearlessly and unrelentingly for their survival, preservation, and promotion. A case in point is his 70,000 character letter to the Chinese regime of their misrule in Tibet. He truly suffered immensely for this brave act, including 10 years imprisonment. <laughs> Mingyamkombe the length and breadth of Tibet to alleviate the suffering of the Tibetan people in their abject living conditions. At the same time, he was, motivated, he was motivating the people to use their mother tongue, Tibetan, in their daily lives. He was truly concerned at, 
the environmental degradation and urged people to protect the Tibetan environment and politically encouraged them to implement self-governance as much as possible. He went to the extent of directly criticizing the Chinese leadership of their misgovernance of Tibet in every respect. His scathing criticism cost him his life. On 28th of January 1989, he passed away an untimely death at 51. In sum, he devoted his entire life for the cause of the Tibetan people. Kungi after the passing away of the 10th Penchen Lama, spearheaded by the Tashilumbu Monastery in India, along with the general public, supplicated His Holiness the Dalai Lama for the genuine reincarnation of the 10th Penchen Lama. As per tradition, His Holiness the Dalai Lama took steps in finding the genuine reincarnation by communicating with the search party in Tibet. In the process, on, on 17th of May 1995, after performing extensive analysis of the selected candidates, coupled with performing divinations, His Holiness the Dalai Lama formally recognized a six-year-old Gendin Chekinyima, born on April 25th, 1989, in the Lhari district of Nakshu, Tibet, as the 11th Penchen Lama. <laughs> Kunjin the Chinese government, sizzling with anger, took swift action by arresting the 60-year-old, his parents, Chade Rinpoche, the head of the search party, and others involved. At the age of six, he is the world's youngest political prisoner. Even to this day, we have no information of his health and whereabouts. 26, 26 years on have gone by, and still no one knows how he looks and where, whether he is alive or dead. As mentioned above, along with him, his entire family and Chade Rinpoche were all arrested and imprisoned. This is indeed one of the darkest periods in Tibetan history. Ever since the arrest of the Penchen Lama, his parents and others, the Tashilumbu Monastery's monks in Tibet have voiced their heartfelt revolt and revulsion against the Chinese government's oppressive actions demanding immediate release of the Penchen Lama and others. For their devotional actions, many were severely tortured, imprisoned and even put to death. The same goes for the Tibetan people in Tibet who were devastated. Matu, Kichi Nedu did that Yana Shungi, Perna, Chibe, Topdanda, Chede Rangi, Topdan, Major Ramaso, Zeme, Toredo, Tonshi, Yabe, Kor, Samli, Yamde, Gazo, Chibe, Henzo, Yamde, Gazo, Drami, Topdan, Henzo, Yamde, Gazo, Chede Ramel, Henzo, Yamde, Gazo, Yamde, Gazo, Yamde, Gazo. Uh, 
Ever since the captivity of the Penchen Lama, we have voiced our anguish against the CCP on key issues such as the rights of the child, the right to one's religion and practice, and the right to freedom of speech and expression and other fundamental rights of the Tibetans, and continuously appealed for support. We continue to appeal, even after vigorous and continuous pressure on China by the devotees of the Penchen Lama, governments sensitive to human rights, especially the, Uni the USA, Canada, EU nations, many Southeast Asian nations, United Nations human rights special experts focus on the Penchen Lama, human rights groups, UN religious rights groups, UN working group on enforced disappearance, and other organizations concerned individuals, the Chinese government has turned a, death ear, a deaf ear. Tata Kunsi, Penchen Gindu Chugin, Macho, Konglo Sumju Sumni, Peggy Yuyang, Kongi, Nedan Jishin, Zawan, Shiki Mebadan, Labor Kongla Rawanton, Sensa Lobjong Nangu, Koka Mebadan, Kushev Chatter and Buchi Chok, Kongran Geju, Gay Yube, Kongi Kusu Nedan Kandra Yumeda, Tana Kutsu Yumesogi, Nedan Same, Shiki Me, Dorna, Kongnam, Mimbe Tsongang to Juni, Draw Me, Chisungi, Sawaki, Top Dan Tidu Same, Mabel, Meloshi, when you should settle her song, Mazo Lorene, Loreshi. Today, the Penchen Lama is 32 years old. He has no freedom and opportunity to study the Buddha Dharma. Chade Rinpoche is now over 80 years old. We don't know whether he is alive or not. In a nutshell, they are in complete subjugation without any rights deserving of human beings. For his devotees the world over, we are in complete anguish day after day. day, after day. Dorna, Quincy, Penchin, Kundin, Chubacho, Lubur, the Combatsovada, Penchin, Kundin, Chuchibo, Gindin, Chugin, Macho, Zendik, Carson, Chamin, Sone, Pernam, Pugi, Nedente, Ganashun, Tegar, Tongto, Kunjig, Che Tunking, Uti, Chigan, Mebe, Pernam, Chabe, Rison, Rimshin, Yamgudu, Troshimbane, Tacha, Pumi, Riki, Keida, Consul, Kuyusu, Nuju, Niga, Zamedu, Tongu, Siju, Lata, Shukchir, Chasing you, Teretin, Zamling, Yamde, Gasone, Tade, in a nutshell, the 10th Penchen Lama died suddenly under suspicious circumstances. The 11th Penchen Lama Gindin Chuegi Nima has vanished from the face of the earth without a trace. Not a single leader has come forward to confront the CCP's heinous actions directly and bring about a resolution on this important issue for the Tibetan people. The situation in Tibet is worsening day by day in every aspect of their way of life, politically, educationally, economically, and culturally. Today, the vital organs of a people, the language, the very way of life, the environment, are fast deteriorating into oblivion. Therefore, we appeal to the United Nations and governments across the world. We appeal to your conscience to take urgent actions to save the people and its rich cultural heritage and civilization of Tibet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Zigya uh, Brimboche. Next, um, our last speaker for the day and for this panel, Honorable C. Kyung Pemba Seringla. May I request you to speak? <coughs> Thank you, Tugdena. Uh, my respects to Rebuche. This is the first time uh, the abbot of Tashnumbu Monastery is representing the case of pension Rebuche to the outside world, and there are many programs planned uh, uh, to disseminate the information uh, or the anguish that we are going through to the outside world, funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, who is represented here by Pema Tulasang. She works for National Endowment for Democracy, and there have, always, uh, there have been many non-governmental organizations apart from the Central Tibetan Administration, who worked tirelessly to advocate for Pension Rinpoche, and we will continue to advocate for Pension Rinpoche uh, in the coming years. And uh, we really hope that uh, all the concerned authorities will voice their 
uh, uh, concern for the pension Rinpoche to the Chinese government to make sure where he is now, whether he is alive or not. So all these questions need to be answered. Uh, I thank uh, Kai Mula for filling up for Gianni Vernetti. Gianni was supposed to be here, but he, uh, the former Vice Minister of Italy, Vice Foreign Minister of Italy, he is now stuck in Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, and he could not make it here. Um, the question arises as to why did China kidnap or steal a six-year-old boy? How come a six-year-old boy became a threat to the government of China? Why did China install another pension lama, another six-year-old boy, in the place of the real pension lama recognized by His Holiness the Dalai Lama? Did the whole process of selection go through the rituals of a selection of a high lama or not? So these are questions that we have to ask ourselves. And these will have a lot of consequences in the years to come, because these are plans that Chinese government had taken to make sure that they select the next His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the 15th Dalai Lama, whenever the time comes. And this is one of the main issues that has been raised through many years now that the 14th Dalai Lama is aging. The 14th Dalai Lama is 86 now. Every government, starting from the United States, also passed and amended the 2002 U.S.-Tibet Policy Act to U.S.-Tibet Policy and Support Act, which again stresses on the recognition of the 15th Dalai Lama. And that has a lot of connection with why this 10th, the 11th pension Rinpoche was stolen in this case or kidnapped by the Chinese Communist government. And why is the communist government so keen to interfere in the issue of reincarnation? His Holiness had said in jest that if the Chinese government is really keen about reincarnation, then the communist leaders should study Buddhism first. They should look for Mao Zedong's reincarnation first Maybe then Deng Xiaoping's reincarnation, then maybe the Dalai Lama's. This was said in jest, but it's also a fact, because the atheist Chinese government does not believe in religion. And reincarnation, the issue of reincarnation, is a purely religious uh, matter. The first one of the questions as to whether the pension lama, Genzhen Nubu, installed by the Chinese government. Did Chinese government go through the rituals as proscribed or not? Was the golden urn selection process itself uh, a religious practice or not? The golden urn, selection through the golden urn of a high lama, was introduced only in 1793 during the lifetime of the 8th Dalai Lama. The Chinese army was invited by the Tibetan government at that time to support the Tibetan army to fight against Nepalese incursions into Tibet. And on their way back for supposedly to help the Tibetans in administrative matters the Manchu emperor at that time introduced the golden urn. But there had already been eight Dalai Lamas before that. There have been that many numbers of pension Rinpoches before that. There was never ever a golden urn ceremony. In case of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the ninth uh, 
the 10th and the 13th Dalai Lamas were not selected through the golden, uh, golden urn. Only the 11th and the 12th were selected through the golden urn. Even the 12th was pre-decided by the Tibetans through rituals, through spiritual rituals as prescribed. Only the 11th Dalai Lama was selected through the golden urn. The selection of the 11th pension, pension Lama through the golden urn itself is shrouded in mystery. Before that, even the death of the 10th, 10th Dalai Lama, I think Rinpoche was very kind enough not to mention that, that the death of the 10th pension Lama was also under very mysterious circumstances. There was no post-mortem done. He was very healthy before that, and he died so suddenly. There were indications of po poisoning, but there was no postmortem, so nobody can prove whether he was he had a natural death or whether he was killed by design by the Communist Party of China. Arja Rinpoche, who was the abbot of Kumbun Monastery in Tibet, who later escaped, and now lives in the United States of America. I know him personally very well, and he had written a book about the selection of the Panchen Lama. The one that was selected by the Chinese government in the list of three six-year-old boys, they had put something below the name of the boy who was selected by the Chinese government that is a little above the other three. So this was all designed by the Chinese government to make sure that the selection made by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the real Panchen Lama, Kenjin Shujinima, was not selected, or purposely not selected. The golden urn ceremony itself was fraud, fraudulent. It was all pre-planned. So there lies the question of the legitimacy or the authenticity of the pension lama that is selected by the Chinese government and who, has been, who is being trained uh, by the Chinese government and to make sure that he is responsible for the selection of the next Dalai Lama whenever that time comes. So in the meantime, the real pension lama, Kendu Chuj Nima, as Rinpoche and all other panelists mentioned, we have no idea where he is. We, we don't even know whether he is alive or not. Even if he is alive, he has not been provided the kind of education that a pension lama should receive, thereby incapacitating the real pension lama to perform the duties to serve the sentient beings. Completely incapacitated. He is not given the education that he needs. Even if he is alive today, even if he, he were to be, uh, if, even if through the pressure of the international community tomorrow or any time, the Chinese government decides to say that Pension Rinpoche is alive and that he is here, even if they show it to the whole world, he has been incapacitated to, his, to perform his religious duties because he is not educated in that manner. <clears throat> Therefore, it is very much a political decision by the Chinese government to interfere in the reincarnation of lamas. That is why they also adopted this order number five in 2007 regarding the reincarnation of lamas. An atheist government who does not believe in religion, who has no idea of what life after death is, because to believe in the process of reincarnation, one has to believe in the philosophy of life after death. And it's up to the individual, not the communist government, to decide where the Lama would be born. So I'm, I'm sure by now everybody knows that it is by design, it is for political reasons alone why 
a six-year-old boy in 1995 became a threat to the Chinese government and why not just him, but his whole family disappeared, including the Lama who was in charge of looking for the reincarnation of the Panchen Lama. The opaqueness of the Chinese system allows that. The, the uh, responsibility that the international community took was not enough to pressurize the Chinese government even to get an idea of where he is, even to get an idea of whether he is alive or not. That is what communism is all about. I have always said that communism is built on lies. And one of the one, one famous Indian socialist leader also said that communism is built on lies. They always keep lying, the Chinese government. They hide the facts. I remember about 15, 10, 15 years ago when we were advocating for Tibet in the European Parliament, the Foreign Affairs Committee, they told us, you have to come back again and again to update us about what is happening to Tibet. Because Chinese government keeps sending delegation after delegation after delegation. Some are political delegations, some are agricultural de delegations, some are scientific delegations, but they keep repeating the same thing, hoping against hope that if they repeat the lie 100 times, then that lie will turn into truth, which cannot, because truth cannot be altered. Therefore, we have to be not only seeking the release of Panchen Lama, not only seeking the information about his whereabouts, not only seeking whether information about whether he is alive or not, that is one part of the uh, question. But the other part of the question is, how will China use the Panchen Lama that they have selected in the process of reincarnation of the next Dalai Lama, in the selection of the next Dalai Lama? Therefore, governments are waking up. The US government has adopted this policy, this, this policy amendment to the uh, policy, and His Holiness had made it very, very clear in 2011, September. And we Tibetans are firm in our, in our conviction that His Holiness alone will be responsible as to where he will be born, how he will be born, and I'm sure he will leave precise indications as to where he will be born next. There will be the, the, the Panchen Lama recognized by the Chinese government is not recognized by the Tibetans. Forget about the Tibetans in exile. None of us do. The Tibetans inside also don't believe in him. That is why the Panchen Lama recognized by the Chinese government does not travel to Tibet very much because there's too much antagonism towards this selection. The 10th Panchen Lama's pictures are still in people's homes, not the Panchen Lama selected by the Chinese government. The 10th Panchen Lama performed many things, many wonderful things for Tibet, despite all the adversities that he faced. After His Holiness went into exile, Rinpoche covered that briefly after His Holiness the Dalai Lama escaped into India, Panchen Lama stayed back. He had the courage to confront the Chinese government. He toured many parts of Tibet and his mind was tormented by what he saw, the destruction of Tibetan people, Tibetan culture, Tibetan religion. That is why as early as 1962, he came with this 70,000 character petition to the Chinese leadership, which became known to the outside world only much later. Because of that petition, he was incarcerated. 
he went through public humiliation. He went through all kinds of discrimination by the Chinese government. And then he was incarcerated for more than 10 years. Only after the death of Mao Zedong, and by the end of the Cultural Revolution in 1976, he was released. Even after going through all these difficulties, he came back with a vengeance. There were some communist leaders at that time, like Hu Yaobang, who decided to send fact-finding delegations into Tibet and found that Tibet had virtually become worse than what it was before 1959. So Hu Yaobang sent back 85% of the Chinese cadres back to China. And then Pension Rinpoche, the 10th Pension Rinpoche, got the opportunity to revive Tibetan language, to revive Tibetan religion, to revive Tibetan culture. He traveled around Tibet. <clears throat> and today, the scholars we have from Tibet on the Tibetan language on Tibetan literature. Most were nurtured during his period in the 80s. And in that sense, his contribution to the revival of Tibetan language and culture inside Tibet was immense. And we remain ever grateful to him. If not for his untimely death, he could have been, he could have played a much more important role in all the three provinces of Tibet for the revival of Tibetan language and culture. And sometimes when it comes to the Tibetan national identity, I was told that Panchen Rinpoche could be quite short-tempered. He replaced all the uh, boards, school boards, all the office boards that were written in Tibetan into Chinese, uh, that were written in Chinese into Tibetan. So he had that courage, he, he had that determination, even after going through all these difficulties. And therefore, Chinese made sure that the real 11th Pension Lama cannot be seen, will not be seen, or will not be able to play the, uh, to continue the work of the 10th Pension Rinpoche. Because the reincarnations come because they have to continue the good work of the previous reincarnation. And they come out of their own will, not imposed by the Communist Party. Therefore, I sincerely request the international community to adopt similar acts like the US government in reprimanding China, in in the, in the action they did on the pension Rinpoche, to seek his release, to let us know where he is. And then also beware of China's design in the selection of the next Dalai Lama. We will not, not a single Tibetan will not, will, will recognize a Dalai Lama recognized by the Chinese government. I want to make that very, very clear. And His Holiness also has been very, very categorical in his statements that he will be responsible, he himself, because he is the person who is going to be reborn. So there is these twin messages. Release Pension Rinpoche, let us know where he is. He was just a six-year-old child when he was taken away. You know, please release him. How can you be so cruel a government who is supposed to govern, provide happiness to people, bring so much unhappiness, bring so much anguish in people's mind. And this is just one example of what China is doing to Tibet. And I really hope that the international community will come together to seek the release of Pension Rinpoche. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable C. Kyung, Ambassador for the very insightful deliberation 
on not just the case of enforced disappearance of the Pinchen Lama, but in fact the malicious efforts by the Chinese government in its attempt to sinicize Tibetan religion and specifically the reincarnation system of Tibet um, that was mentioned a few times in the previous panels. So thank you very much, Kumo Sikyong. I would also like to thank all the panelists here um, for their very detailed and insightful presentations. Um, may I request um, all the panelists to please showcase the two books. We have um, the two books, Tibet's Stolen Child, um, in English and Tibetan. Um, the English version are av available outside, so when you walk out, uh, please grab a copy. Um, with this, we have come to not just the end of this panel, but the end of today's, uh, the first day of Geneva Forum. Um, but before we end, uh, may I request Kung Wo Sikyong to please present a scarf uh, to Kai Muller. I'm in between. Just to me. <laughs> just you. And also to the picture. Thank you, Kai. Thank you. And to Rinpoche as well. And thank you to our audience for your attention. Thank you very much and have a great evening. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you.